Hey everyone, Father Wani here. We are in Saturday of the fifth week of Easter and our text is taken from Acts chapter 16 verses 1 to 10. But I'd recommend that we read Acts chapter 15 verses 36 onwards. Um, because I think there's this a very crucial component uh, in uh, church ministry that is spoken about uh, in this section. Now, let me put this whole teaching in perspective. Acts chapter 15 tells us of the great council in Jerusalem. We know that at the heart of this council was the issue of circumcision for the Gentile converts. Should be, they be circumcised or not? And we know that the council ended very decisively. The apostles and the elders meet together. There are long deliberations and after which the Apostle James, as leader of the church in Jerusalem, stands up and gives his verdict. And his verdict is very, very clear. There are certain conditions uh, that the Gentile converts have to abide by. Uh, they cannot eat food offered to idols. They can't be fornication. But the core issue of circumcision has now been dispensed for uh, the Gentile Christians. Or let's put it this way, it is no longer a prerequisite to be a follower of Christ. And I'm saying this very uh, clearly because today's text will also deal with the circumcision of Timothy. But talking about Acts chapter 15 verse 36 onwards, the council has ended and we know uh, from the text that will follow that not everyone was happy with this decision. There are a group of uh, Jewish Christians called Judaizers and these Judaizers will follow Paul because they are unhappy with the council's decision. They will question his, uh, the fact that he is even an apostle. But at the end of the council of Jerusalem, when Paul and Barnabas are about to make their way, there is another problem. They are out to go on their second missionary journey. This missionary journey starts at the end of chapter 15 and goes all the way through chapter 18, verse 22. And Paul and Barnabas get into an argument. Yes, this was no easy, this was not a small, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of fight that they were having. This was a massive uh, argument that they had. Why? Because Barnabas wanted to take his cousin, John Mark, the writer of the Gospel, the Gospel of Mark, was his cousin. He wanted to take him and Paul saw him as a deserter. That's how the Acts of the Apostles uh, reflects Paul's mind. He saw the author of the Gospel, the cousin of Barnabas, as a deserter. Now what happened was that during the first missionary journey, we are told that from Pamphylia, John Mark leaves the trio and he comes back to Jerusalem. And as uh, we don't have really facts, but uh, we kind of took a, 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 an educated guess and put it down at that point of time, perhaps to the fact that John Mark was upset that his cousin Barnabas was no longer in the lead. Remember up to this point of time, up to chapter um, early after chapter 14, it was always Barnabas and Paul and then suddenly the Acts of the Apostles says Paul and Barnabas or rather it was always Barnabas and Saul and then uh, it was Paul who takes the lead and maybe John Mark just didn't like uh, the fact that his cousin was no longer sitting in the driver's seat. But Paul held a grudge and that's so important to realize that even our Apostles, the Apostle to the Gentiles held a grudge, a grudge enough to say, I am not taking this man with me. And we can see that there was not only disagreements in the Council of Jerusalem, but there were also disagreements on a very personal level between Paul and Barnabas. And we know that Paul and Silas begin the second missionary journey, well as Barnabas and his cousin John Mark go back to the island of Cyprus. So uh, the even though it should have been a victory of sorts for St. Paul. Um, there were things that were going against him. In fact, there were three. He made enemies with the Jewish Christians. He has now had a fallout with his own 
a brother uh, who ministered with him, Barnabas. And we are also told that on this journey that while Paul and Silas wanted to evangelize in Asia, which is modern day Turkey, the Holy Spirit now prevents that mission too. We are told that in a dream a man appears to Paul and he appeals for help in Macedonia. Macedonia is in Europe, in Greece. So the call, the desire was to minister in Asia and God calls uh, Paul into Europe. You see, even on this front, Paul really didn't have his way. But while it was a man who appeared to him in his dreams in Macedonia, calling him for help, we are told in today's text, or rather in tomorrow's text, um, or on Monday's text, I think it should be, that when Paul finally reached Macedonia, it was not a man who greeted him, but a woman, Lydia, and she and her whole household will become the first baptized converts in Europe. Remember, uh, we did in the Acts of the Apostles, we spoke of the first convert in Africa. It was the finance minister of uh, the Queen of Kandake or Ethiopia. And now we will soon hear of the first convert in, um, in Europe. Now, what does all of this uh, teach us on a very practical level? That so much of our lives are like Paul, you know, we think uh, we are on a strong wicket and one by one our wickets keep falling. Um, people who support us in ministry desert us, disagree with us. Others have uh, swords and daggers drawn out at us. And then what we thought is mission, God himself um, has other plans. But so much of our lives is black and white. And it is God who draws us into Technicolor. Allow the Lord to speak to you. As I said last weekend, uh, I'm going to take a break every Sunday, so there'll be no teaching on Sunday. I will see you back again on Monday. Do leave your comments. Uh, leave also, please do like these videos. The more you like it, the more others, it pops up uh, on YouTube and share this reflection with others, especially if you know of someone in ministry who wants to just give up. There are so many uh, lay people, even priests, who just want to give up sometimes because everything seems to fall apart around them. Encourage uh, your priests, encourage them. It's not easy. I know we are not angels, but encourage. Whenever you go for mass this uh, weekend, walk up to your priest, encourage him, say, Father, uh, we like what you're doing, we want to encourage you, we want to just smile at you, support you. And if you have to correct a priest, do it um, fraternally. Yeah, Don't uh, demean him in public. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. Uh, I know very often we priests have inflated uh, egos, uh, but you do your part in building up the church. Bye for now.